Hi guys, it's Chris with City Your Homestead. And Tom didn't get a chance to see his buddy last night. So he's going over there this morning. His buddy was just way too tired. And so I've been scouring, looking for different canning recipes that are kind of like meals in jars so that, you know, we have stuff readily prepared that we just got to add or do whatever to it. So I found a recipe for shepherd pie filling, which honestly, it's the only one I could find. And it was on a channel, Trails End 62. And I'll put his link in below when I get done with this. So, you know, I can't lower this, so let me go here. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we're going to start three pounds of hamburger um, cooking. I was going to use my already cooked hamburger, but I guess I've used it all up. <laughs> I do have canned, but I don't really want to recanned canned meat, if that makes any sense. And I thought this was completely thawed out, and it's not, but that's alright, it'll cook up. And I won't make you guys watch the whole time it's thawing out. Now he did canned vegetables and stuff. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to be using frozen. Because when I can, I do like to use frozen um, if I can. So there's going to be a few alterations from what he has. But you know what? That's fine. We all have our own thing that we do. All right. And actually, I found quite a few. I joined his channel. I found quite a few um, recipes of his that I happen to like. So I might be doing a few more of his. He seems like a really nice guy. And he's a little bit of a rebeler too. So I like that as well. <laughs> All right. So his calls for, let me see, a third of a cup of onions. But I'm actually just going to chop this whole onion because with cooking it, it's going to shrink it down anyway. Because I'm going to do mine just a little bit different than he did. So, I'm going to chop these in smaller pieces. I don't want very big chunks. Because, honestly, I don't think I ever put onions in my shepherd's pie. But, I'm going to follow along with a lot of what he does. So, we're going to do that. I'm going to throw that in there. I'm surprised that there's like hardly no recipes for some of the things I was thinking about making. And I don't know if it's because it's considered rebel or just because nobody's tried it. I guess I'm not sure. But... Me and Tom were actually trying to go to a little bit smaller portions um, so that maybe we have enough for that night and then he takes something for the basement or we have enough for that night and have dinner as well. So, but we're trying to cut back on our portion size. I was down 46 pounds and then for some reason... I had gained back three pounds. Now I'm back down to 45 pounds. But anyway, and Tom's down 20, so we're doing pretty good, I think. His um, sugar numbers are below 100 now, and mine are like 130, 150. A lot better than 300. <laughs> so I'm going to cook this hamburger down just a little bit because it is frozen. Then we're going to add the spices and stuff. I'll be back. I'm going to have to either get a different tri bar tripod or figure out how this how come this one's not tilting but anyways so I'm going to put in the spices first so that can be closest to the meat and we can get it um, mixed in with there so we need a teaspoon of salt and we need a half a teaspoon of pepper And it says to use steak seasoning, so I'm going to use 
Tom's favorite there, the Montreal steak seasoning. And we need a tablespoon of that. Tom loves that stuff. He thinks we should put it on chicken. We should put it on everything. So, <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to mix that in with the meat. I did drain my meat, get all the fat off of it, because you don't want extra fat in your jars. All right, so we got that mixed in there. Now we're going to use an eighth of a cup of mustard. I know, right? <laughs> and Tom's like, that's kind of gross. And I'm like, well, if you think about it, you put ketchup and mustard on your um, on your hamburgers, so what's so gross? And then you need a cup of ketchup. Now, it says to use the juice of um, the cans of corn that he put in. But because I'm doing mine differently, I'm just going to add a half a cup of water. Since I won't have the juice of the, um, the juice in there. So then it says you need one and a half teaspoons of, I can't find my teaspoon. <laughs> oh, there it is. Of Worcestershire sauce. Now, if you want to put more spices and that in there, that's completely up to you. You can do whatever you want. You know, it's, it's your dish. I'll lean it this way a little bit so you can see. I'm getting that water incorporated into it. It's not oil, it's the water. <laughs> Now, he just used um, peas and corn. Now, personally, I like the green beans and stuff in mine, too. So, let me see if I can get this to drop at all. All right. So, he says you need two cans of each. So, they're basically 15 and a half ounce cans. So, I'm rounding it up to 16. So, it's 32 ounces Per two cans so we're gonna need 64 ounces of the mixed vegetables that probably should be what's actually here in the here hold on we'll be down here now all right so we're gonna do 32 ounces which I can already tell you this is gonna be the whole bag <laughs> Because what was left of there. And we're going to get that all mixed in with it. It actually smells really good. And then, you know, obviously with this, you're not going to can your mashed potatoes with it. So what you would do is just put it in your pan. When it gets out, you know, put it in your baking pan. And you would bake it with your mashed potatoes or some people use, I don't know, other potatoes to go on top. You can do whatever you like. So let me show you what it looks like. Isn't that pretty? All right, so now let me get this mess cleaned up and get my jars over here and we're gonna get it put in jars. All right, so I added another half cup of water. I felt that it needed it. So all together, I added a cup. Now, if you're using the canned vegetables, you probably won't have to add that much. But you want to make it the way that you feel is best for your jar. And I just really honestly felt that that would be better. Now, he canned his in pint and a half jars, which I don't have any. I mean, I do, but they're filled with stuff. Because it's not a typical one that I would use, you know what I mean? And make sure that you're debubbling all of this. See, that's why I kind of wanted the juice a little bit more water. Because I wanted to have a little bit of juice in there. Because I felt like it was going to be a little bit too dry. 
So I'm going to put just a little bit more in there because you can go up to the inch head space. Now, when you alter the recipe of somebody else, obviously, you're going to have things that are going to be a little bit different than what theirs is. Because his recipe, I thought about ketchup and mustard, and I'm like, gross. But honestly, <laughs> we put ketchup and mustard on our cheeseburgers all the time, right? So why not? And this meat is all cooled down because it had all those frozen vegetables put in there and cold water, everything else. So the jars and the water will be cold. And I got six half or six pint jars here. Hopefully that's enough to fill them up. I'm enjoying canning for you guys. You guys will have to let me know if you want more canning videos. Because I figure as long as I got food in my freezer and um, I've got jars downstairs that can be filled, <laughs> I'm going to keep coming up with recipes. So you guys let me know if that's something that you guys want to see more of. So let me get these all filled up and then I'll be right back. You guys, I have never seen a recipe so right on. I mean, I got exactly six pints, and there was nothing left. So that was so right on. All right, so we're going to rinse off all the lids, or rings, rims. Jeez, I can't even talk today. It must be Saturday. And I'm going to use a different cloth for every one that I do because it does have meat in it. And even though I drained all that fat off of there, you want to make sure you get it all off. So go around twice if you have to, three times if you have to, because it's going to suck to do all that work and have it not seal. Now, do I think that there's going to be enough left out of using these pints that Tom would have enough for the next day at work? No. I think it'll be a nice meal for the both of us. Add a little side dish to it. Mashed potatoes on top. And I think it'll be great. Now, will he have to go downstairs and get something for the next day? Probably. But that's okay. I've got plenty of spaghetti and goulash and chili and bean soup and all kinds of stuff down there for him to take to work. That was the point of pant um, doing those in pints so that he would have stuff left for lunches. So why not get some of that stuff used up? <laughs> I have soups and, hat and pints everything else and you know what I've got a chip jar hold on good thing I did have another pint jar up here that is another reason for cleaning off your rims is because then you can find this see that big chip out of there if you would have tried to can with that it would not have sealed and it wouldn't be safe. <laughs> so make sure that you, you know, check for that as you're rubbing through. That's why I don't like to use cloths. I like to use, um, you know, either um, paper towels or a thin washcloth or whatever because I may not have felt that through like a towel or something else that some people use. And you want to be able to feel if there's a chip or a crack or anything else. So now we're just going to put the lids on our... on our jars and I'm going to be moving this canner over because I'm going to get ready for the next canning recipe it won't be all in one video I'll do a couple and we do have three more reviews to do today possibly four I don't know if the other one's coming in today or not but they seem to like to get it so that it's all towards the weekend but you know some of it I kind of need Tom's help to do so, <laughs> hence waiting for the weekend too. Yeah, go on there, you little booger. All right, so we got six nice, beautiful pints. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move that over, get the top put on. I am going to let it vent for 10 minutes, and then um, 
Once it's vented for 10 minutes, I'm going to put on the jiggler. Um, I do have more than one canner, and I could do a whole bunch of recipes at one time. But then you guys wouldn't get them. <laughs> so, I'm going to do one at a time, even though it takes longer during the day to do it. That's okay. Tom, when he gets back, we have those reviews to do. He wants to clean the basement today, and he wants to get out there and get all those tomatoes pulled because... He's got people at work that will take all the green ones and all the red ones. So we can get rid of every one of them and not let anything go to waste. So I'm going to get this started. When it starts to steam, I'll come back. Okay, so now it's steamed for 10 minutes. I'm going to go put the 10 pound weight on. And then what we want it to do is get it to start building enough pressure that it jiggles. Once it does that, and it goes, tch, 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 um, we're going to turn the um, heat down on it. <coughs> Excuse me. Normally, mine's at about halfway on medium. So I'm going to get that to jiggle, and once it does, I'm going to start my timer for 75 minutes because it is pints. All right, so there we go. They've all set. There's our shepherd's pie filling. Now, if we feel like one pint is not enough, we can always open up another one and make a bigger bowl. But look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, yeah. Shepherd's Pie Filling, guys. I'll leave his link below. I did doctor it up a little bit, so you can do whatever you want to as well. You guys have a blessed day. Be a blessing, and I'll be back with the next one.